If you've spent any time online, you've probably seen the word superfood thrown around like confetti. Kale chips, chia seeds, acai bowls, matcha lattes. They're all marketed as superfoods. But what actually makes a food super? Is there a scientific checklist that decides it? Or is it just another fancy buzzword designed to make us spend more at the grocery store? So today, let's uncover what exactly is a superfood? Well, the truth behind superfoods might surprise you because it's not exactly what you think. Let's get into it right here on History of Simple Things. Let's start with the basics. The term superfood doesn't come from any scientific classification. You won't find it in nutrition textbooks or biology glossaries. It's not like vitamin C or antioxidant. Those are real measurable things. Superfood, on the other hand, is a marketing term. Yup, the first time superfood started to appear in the public eye, it wasn't used by scientists. It was used by marketers trying to sell a product. The word actually dates back to the early 20th century. Around World War I, the United Fruit Company, a major banana importer, started promoting bananas as a superfood. They claimed bananas were the ultimate health fruit, perfect for children and soldiers alike. They even backed it up with pseudoscientific studies suggesting bananas could cure diseases like celiac or diabetes. Of course, none of that was true, but the campaign worked. Bananas became one of the most popular fruits in the world, and the word superfood began its climb into everyday language. Fast forward to today, and that same marketing strategy still exists, just with trendier foods. Now it's not bananas, it's kale, quinoa, blueberries, and acai. Superfoods became the modern way of saying, this food is healthier than everything else. It's catchy, it's simple, and it sells, especially in a world obsessed with health trends, detox diets, and longevity hacks. But here's the thing, while the label might be more marketing than science, that doesn't mean the foods themselves are a scam. Many so-called superfoods really are nutrient-dense. They're packed with vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, or healthy fats, all of which play important roles in keeping your body running smoothly. The problem is the word super makes it sound like these foods have magical powers. And that's where the confusion begins. So, what actually makes a food super, at least in the sense that people use it today? Generally, a superfood is something that provides a high concentration of beneficial nutrients relative to its calories. Think blueberries, salmon, spinach, or chia seeds. These foods are rich in compounds like polyphenols, omega-3 fatty acids, or fiber, all linked to better heart health, improved brain function, and lower inflammation. Take blueberries, for example. They're loaded with antioxidants called anthocyanins, which give them their deep blue color. These compounds help neutralize free radicals, unstable molecules that can damage your cells over time. Studies suggest that eating blueberries regularly might improve memory and reduce the risk of chronic diseases like heart disease or diabetes. That's genuinely impressive but it doesn't make blueberries a cure-all. You can't live on blueberries alone and expect to be invincible. The same goes for other superfoods. Kale is rich in vitamin K and iron. Avocados are high in monounsaturated fats that support heart health. Salmon provides omega-3 fatty acids that reduce inflammation. All great, but none of them can single-handedly transform your health. Here's where the superfood myth often goes too far. Marketers love to highlight one ingredient and call it a miracle. 
Remember the acai berry craze from the 2000s? It was said to boost metabolism, reverse aging, and even melt fat. But when researchers looked closer, they found that while acai does contain antioxidants, its effects aren't that different from other common fruits like blueberries or grapes. The same story happened with goji berries, spirulina, and quinoa. Each one went viral, became a global sensation, then eventually settled back down once people realized it's just another healthy food, not a magic bullet. That's the danger of the superfood label. It turns nutrition into a popularity contest. Foods rise and fall in trend cycles, sometimes based on genuine science, but often based on hype, influencers, or clever branding. Meanwhile, humble foods like lentils, oats, or cabbage, which are just as nutritious, get ignored because they don't sound super. But there's also a deeper reason why we keep chasing superfoods. We all want a shortcut to better health. It's human nature. The idea that one smoothie ingredient could extend your life or fix your skin is extremely appealing. It feels simpler than eating a balanced diet, exercising, and managing stress. The problem? Health doesn't work that way. Nutrition isn't about one miracle food. It's about patterns, balance, and consistency. You can eat all the kale and chia seeds you want, but if the rest of your diet is poor or lacking in variety, it won't make a difference. What truly matters is your overall dietary pattern, how all the foods you eat interact together over time. At the end of the day, the real super part isn't the food itself. It's what happens when we combine knowledge, curiosity, and mindful eating. So next time you see something labeled as a superfood, take it with a grain of salt, or maybe a sprinkle of chia seeds. Enjoy it, appreciate its nutrients, but remember, no single food is the hero of your health story. You are. Thank you for watching. If you have suggestions for our next video, feel free to share them in the comments below. We'll be sure to give you an acknowledgement for your contribution. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.